Hello everyone. Um, this is the lecture nine, which is hydraulics of slots and wells, which is from the chapter eight from the textbook by Hausman. The learning objectives of this class is to derive flow rate for perfect slots in confined and unconfined wells using some boundary conditions and Darcy's law, and also to derive flow rate for perfect wells in confined and unconfined wells. And the last one is to derive the uh, drawdown curve and influence range and free discharge height. So we're going to talk about the definition of the drawdown curve and influence range and the definition of the free discharge height. Let's move on. So let's talk about the perfect slot in unconfined aquifer. And the slot is the, when the wells are closely spaced so that it's more like a trench. So here the Q, small Q is defined as the flow rate per unit width, and the capital Q is the total discharge rate, the total flow rate. So the assumption is, first assumption is that a well is fully penetrating, so that the well is penetrated and drill to the, uh, the impermeable stratum. And this is called the perfect slot condition. And the flow is in a steady state condition so that uh, the flow rate and the pressure does not change with time. So it just stays constant with time in variable parameters. And let's look at the schematic. So here is the, uh, the formation and the groundwater table is in dashed line here and then by the drawdown so this is the original groundwater table and by the drawdown you have uh, some the pressure or the phreatic curve which is parabolic here and uh, the water height in the well is h sub w and the r w is the radius of the well and h from the impermeable layer so this is the impermeable, impermeable layer layer and h is the initial height of the groundwater table so then from the Darcy's law the b equals b time a or the kia then here the area is say that at the x the distance at x the y is the height of the phreatic surface then the water will just flow in um, along this y height height of the y so that the area of this um, aquifer for the per unit width is the y time one and here the i is the hydro gradient, so round h over round x. And using the Dupuit theorem approximation, the i is dy over dx, so that this is the slope, the same is the slope of the uh, drawdown curve at the point. So that q can be expressed as the k time dy over dx time y. So then we can integrate both sides. So first we have to manipulate it to be able to solve it. So the, the y will, dy times y remains and the k and dx can be uh, shift to the, uh, the move to the other side. So q over k over dx. So then we can just multiply, the, apply the integration. So then by integrating both sides, we can get the equation y square over two times q over k times x plus c, the coefficient. So then, this c is unknown. So to solve for c, we can apply some boundary conditions. So first boundary condition is the uh, at x-axis, uh, the, when the x is zero, so at the well point here. So the, the y, the, the height of the phreatic surface is hw. So we know the height. So y is hw. 
So then by inserting it here to this equation, so x becomes 0 and y is hw. So then um, c is hw square over 2. And the second boundary condition is when the x is L. So L is the length of the influence zone. So that when the x is L, the periodic surface height is the same with the initial height of groundwater table H. So the y becomes H. So H square over 2 equals Q over K times L plus HW square over 2. So using this equation, we can solve it for Q. So Q becomes H square over H W square over 2 L times K. So note that this Q is the flow from one side of the slot. So we have to multiply 2 to get the, uh, the flow rate to the both sides. So we've been solving it for just one side here. So my multiplying by 2 then you get the total discharge rate. So this is the same with the equation in the textbook, 8.1. Then also we can get the equation for drawdown curve, DDC. And here the y square over 2 is q over k times x plus hw square over 2. And from here we can uh, substitute the q with this equation that we just derive it here. Here. then y square 2 and it becomes this equation so then here by rearranging it h square by uh, minus y square is l minus x over l times h square minus hw square it's the same with the equation 8.2 so for a given x y the height of the um, groundwater table can be determined by using h and HW and L, which can be measured. So we know the initial groundwater table height, and we can also measure the uh, ground, uh, no, the, the water level at the well, in the well, and also we can also measure or the estimate the uh, influence range L. So then S is the drawdown, it's called a drawdown, and H minus Y can be also determined using these equations. Um, then, how can we determine the influence length L, or the influence range? And L is strictly changed with time. So firstly, you have very stiff, but so the L will be here. But as time goes by, this just goes to somewhere so that uh, you have uh, L increasing with time. So Kojeni suggested that L is 1.5 square root of H times K times T over the plus the N. Here the H is the original height of the groundwater table. K is the uh, Darcy's coefficient of the permeability. And T is time and N is the velocity. Or uh, for preliminary design, chart suggested this equation. The L is C times H minus HW times square root of K. And here the um, C, for the coefficient C, you can use 3000 for wells, and you can use or 2000 or 1500 to 2000 for slot. Usually 2000 is used. Then, uh, free discharge height. So what's the definition of the free discharge height? In reality, drawdown curves does not begin at the water height at the well because of the, some friction or inefficiency in the well. So H naught is the, uh, the actual water height in the well, but the drawdown curve can start at HW, which is a little bit higher than the uh, H0. So then here the difference between HW and H0 is called the free discharge height. So to calculate the HS, Champman suggested this chart showing that the, uh, the H0 over H 
for h s over h can be determined by the l over h. So if l is not known, then you can use the uh, the previous equation. So using either this equation or this equation, you can assume the uh, h w and get the l, and then you can get the h w or h s using this. So then you compare the assumed HW and the calculated HW and iterate the assumptions until you have the close values to each other. Then for wells, the Kenji also suggested this is the following equation HS equals C times H minus H naught square over H. And here the coefficient C is typically 0.5 is used. Then, uh, can we derive the flow rate for a perfect slot in confined aquifers, also for the steady state flow? Um, so here you have a aquifer which is confined aquifer, so that water flow or the can be stored in this confined aquifer, but it's confined by the impermeable layer up and down here. So that uh, when you apply, when you install the piezometer, the pressure will be higher than the groundwater table. So then, um, let's assume that the B is the uh, height of this confined aquifer. So that A will be B time 1, the area to the well. So from the Darcy's law, K, I, A will be just B. So that k times dy over dx or times b. So we can solve this equation as we just did for the unconfined aquifer. So by integrating both sides, b times y equals q over k times x plus c can be derived. Then here, also using some boundary condition at the uh, x of 0 that y is hw so that the c can be determined the c will be b time hw so that the final equation will be like this then using the second boundary condition when the x is l the y is h so that bh is the same with q over k time l plus b time hw so using this we can also uh, derive the equation in terms of Q. So Q is K times B over L and H minus HW. So you can see that the flow rate here is proportional to the uh, H over H, H minus HW. So it's a linear relationship. So before, in the unconfined aquifer, it was parabolic with the uh, second order equation here. So H squared minus hw square. So that's the difference between confined aquifer and the unconfined aquifer. And also for the transmissivity, using some transmissivity definition, t is b times k, then q becomes t over l times h minus hw. For total discharge rate, because this is from for uh, the flow rate from one side, so from both sides, then at 2 times q, so then that this will be the total discharge rate, 2 times k times b over l times h minus hw. And for the drawdown curve, also you can get the h minus y, uh, which is l minus x over l times h minus hw. So here, you can see that the drawdown curve is straight line. Or in terms of the Q and K, the S will be L minus X over B times Q over K. So next up, uh, for the last one, uh, we'll, let's drive the uh, flow rate for the perfect well in a steady state condition in confined aquifer, unconfined aquifer. So here, the well is just the uh, circular shape. So it's, uh, it's different from the slot. 
in terms of the geometry. So you have a well diameter RW, uh, no, the radius of the well, the RW, and the position in the position X, the flow is going radially to, in, to into the well. So Q is K time A time I, so Kia, and here the K time the hydric, hydric gradient I is dy over dx, and the A is um, at the distance x, 2 pi x times y. So this is the A, and this is I. So then the Q time 1 of x times dx, you can manipulate the equation to be able to solve it with, by integration. Uh, the right side will be 2 pi k times y times dy. So then um, Q dx equals integration of 2 pi k y dy. And here, you can integrate it from um, hw to h. So, oh, sorry, for the y is from hw to h, and for the with, with respect to x, that's from here the r w to l. To the influence range L. So then, if you integrate it, Q becomes this equation. So Q is pi times K times H square minus H W square over ln uh, natural log of L over R W. The equation for drawdown can be also derived as follows which is same with the equation 8.4 in the textbook. So please note that the determination of the CPG quantity, uh, it is generally safe to use the H0 instead of the HW, which means that um, instead of using the, uh, the initial height at the well for the drawdown curve, if you use the H0, that's measured value uh, or the monitored value in the water height in the well then it's you can so that's gonna increase the uh, the pump capacity so it will be more conservative design in terms of the pump capacity so then the hs how can we determine the hs here the hs can be suggested the following equation, C times H minus H naught square over H, where the C is 0 0.5, then we can approximate the HS from here. Also, by looking at the difference between the predicted drawdown versus the actual drawdown, you can also calculate the well efficiency. So as the, uh, the well efficiency increases if the following cases happens, the well screen has enough in a, insufficient openings, or the case the well screen is too short, or if the surrounding filter zone restricts the flow, or the construction well contaminates the adjacent soil with fines, with, such as the drilling fluid, then the well efficiency increases. But inefficient wells means the higher cost of pumping. So you have to increase the pump capacity so that it will cost more money. So to wrap up, uh, let's go back to the, uh, the original learning objectives. We've seen how to derive the flow rate for the perfect slot in confined and unconfined wells, and also for uh, perfect wells in unconfined wells. And we've seen how to compute the drawdown curve and influence range, and to estimate how to estimate the free discharge height using some empirical equations.